I'm Peter Dolan um, at Dolan Farms. We're a, I'm a third generation dairy farmer. Uh, we have currently have um, two generations or three generations on the farm here. Mum and Dad started milking here um, many years ago, and uh, yeah, we've Sam and I and our wives are share farming yep. with uh, Mum and Dad. Uh, we're milking 600 cows at the moment um, on about 280 hectares, and we have a. Um, uh, a lot of out paddocks for young stock and, and for pasture production. We're in Eckland South, yeah, southwest Victoria. We put a new water chiller in, a uh, um, glycol system, and it goes to an underground tank during the day off solar. So it sort of acts as a thermal storage battery. And, uh, and then during milking, we, we pump out of that through a plate cooler system and chills the milk down to about five to six degrees when it enters the vat whereas the old system was just a regular plate cooler off a cooling tower and that again in the vat about sort of 16, 18 degrees. So um, by doing that we're um, and trying to do it during the day, um, yeah, we probably uh, sort of halved our energy bill there with cooling milk. And then another new hot water um, system was put in, uh, a new CO2 heat pump, which also runs during the day and that heats our water. It's gone from an 18 kilowatt three phase hot water system that runs off peak at night to now a 4.8 kilowatt system that runs during the day off solar. Yeah, it takes a little bit longer to heat the water, but it's um, yeah, a lot more energy efficient. On paper, it's, it should reduce our um, energy usage by 75% and we've found at the moment it's about 50%, but we've got some tweaking to do and some more control measures to put in that should get us down to that 75% reduction. So very energy efficient. My name is Jared Leake and I'm the CEO for the Australian Alliance for Energy Productivity or A2EP as we're known in energy circles. Um, we have a focus on improving energy productivity across Australia and manufacturing, agriculture and, and transport industries. And, and we have a specific interest in heat pumps because of how they can improve energy productivity. Uh, and that means they can deliver more value for less kilowatt hours or less gigajoules. Uh, they've proven that they can uh, achieve at least 300% uh, uh, improvement in energy productivity. And, and so we've been uh, uh, investigating the technology through various feasibility studies and, and uh, tracking technology and tracking suppliers over the last four or five years. And, and we've seen a tremendous development and interest in the technology over this last few years. And with the increasing energy prices, uh, we're seeing an ever-increase interest in the technology as well. Uh, yeah, overall it went to plan. Um, we used, one of our stipulations was that we wanted to use local tradespeople because that, um, if you know, if there's a breakdown or a fault, it's, they're literally within half an hour away, they can be here and to fix the fault. There's no, not as much downtime. Um, so yeah, our, our um, chili unit was produced locally. Our, our, heat, our new hot water pump was produced in Melbourne, and that was used. We used a local um, industrial plumber to plumb that in, so he knows the system. He's done a few of those systems now. Um, so yeah, we pretty much try to use as many local tradespeople as we could. So when you're looking at uh, purchasing a heat pump. Whilst it's nice to hear from your neighbours and they get a give you a tick to say this heat pump worked for them, uh, you do need to assess it for your own circumstances. Uh, you do need to be able to um, understand what you're being offered and, and hold that heat pump supplier to account. And that means getting multiple quotes and really listing out the different facets of each heat pump offer. You know, things like how they measure the temperature and, and, and uh, through the heat pump, um, different refrigerants that they have, uh, and uh, obviously the cost and the, and the size of the compressors on board. Um, so it's really a matter of, uh, there is still definitely due diligence here involved. Well, the idea was to sort of take the peaks out of our, a lot of dairy farms are energy hungry in the morning uh, before dark when there's not a lot of solar and, and then in the evening. And uh, we are very high energy uh, usage and that's sort of using the solar and, and changing the way we use energy throughout the day on solar. That's taken a lot of the high peak load demands out of the system. So we've kind of plateaued our usage and um, try to be more sustainable. And that'll sort of safeguard us in the future for, uh, for high energy costs. Um, 
and uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a, still a bit more fine tuning to do, which we will do over time, and that'll probably bring the efficiencies down a lot more. So that'll be good. Yeah. So um, yeah, basically two thirds of our um, energy usage was uh, yeah heating milk and cool and sorry heating water and cooling milk. So uh, yeah, by targeting those two areas, we're able to pretty much halve the um, halve the cost in those two areas. So heat pumps. Uh, the main thing is efficiency and you're looking at that uh, at least 300 percent efficiency uh, certainly versus uh, an electric resistance heating and and up to 400 or four times the, the performance versus say a lpg or gas burning um, hot water system so that's that's number one you're getting efficiency and say well what does that what does that give you as well uh, so that gives you an ability to to get more out of those thin swirl lines those thin power lines that are coming to your property and and, and you're getting more value out of those so that means maybe you can add on and, and enlarge in the, the herd size um, it also means your your future proofing for future electrical uh, electrification of your property demands of, of energy so that might be electrification of your irrigation system your atvs and other vehicles uh, maybe maybe it comes into crushing grain and things as well so what you're doing is you're, you're future proofing by getting the most out of the energy that you have and yeah is that energy coming from the, the thin swirl lines or is that coming from your, your solar pv uh, future proofing finally and of course the big topic is, is decarbonization uh, what this does is by uh, being at 300 percent efficient then you're instantly reducing that energy uh, requirement electricity requirement say um, that helps you decarbonize uh, if you're still going to be pulling from the grid and as this grid decarbonizes uh, then that's less and less uh, carbon emissions coming from your hot water heating uh, and that that uh, goes a long way to be able to say uh, you're a, you're a, a net zero uh, milk producer and uh, really this is what's needed through the entire dairy food chain as well the projects that we've done um, for, the energy, for energy reduction in our journey, we put a new VSD on the vacuum pump, which reduced our uh, energy consumption with the vacuum pump. It sort of halved that. And the chiller unit, um, that's also halved our milk cooling uh, regime. Uh, and the heat, the new heat pump system, that's yeah, that's that's halved our energy costs as well. We reckon that with a fit bit more fine tuning and automation, we can get that down to about 75% overall reduction in heating water so that's pretty that's a big big game changer i think that way